Lab 3, Black Hole Orbit. For this lab, I will be discussing the purpose, certain physics principles, the process, the computational model, and discussion questions. The purpose of this lab was to find the mass of a black hole that a star is orbiting with given data. The resulting mass that I found the black hole to be was 1.99 e31 kilograms. There are a few main physics principles that one must first recognize in order to understand this lab and how to solve for the mass of the black hole. First is the momentum principle, which is delta p equals f net times delta t. This can be rearranged in order to solve for other parts. The derivative form is f net equals dp dt. Next, we will use the gravitational force equation and rearrange it while filling in known variables in order to solve for the mass of the black hole, as you can see in this line of code. I will now talk about the process, or how exactly I used vPython to compute this value. I was given the mass of the star, 1.9890 e 30 kilograms, the position of the black hole, delta t, which is the amount of seconds in a day, 60 seconds times 60 minutes, times 24 hours, which equals about 86,400 seconds, and I was also given the star's position data in the CSV file. For these variables, I used the two physics principles that I just explained. I began by initializing certain values in the code, such as the black hole's position, the star's mass, and delta t. Then, I used the velocity components in order to solve for final and initial velocity. Next, I used the velocity to solve for the initial and final momentum vectors. Then I made f net equal dp dt. I then solved for the components of f net. Since we do not know the value of r, to solve for dp dt perpendicular, I used the knowledge that dp dt equals dp dt parallel plus dp dt perpendicular. Towards the end of the code, I finally used the gravitational formula, where g equals approximately 6.67 e negative 11. Then I rearranged it and solved for the mass of the black hole. Here's what my computational model looked like. The yellow arrow represents the net force and always points towards the black hole. The black arrow is the parallel component of the net force and the blue arrow represents the perpendicular component of the net force. The arrow sizes change in, according to the distance they're at. The star did not make a complete orbit in this given time interval, but eventually it will complete the motion. Now, what does it mean? How are f net and dpdt different from each other? According to the momentum principle, they are the same numerical value but f net predicts the net force of all the objects acting upon it, while dpdt represents the change in momentum over time. But what is the difference between dpdt and delta p over delta t? dpdt is instantaneous, while delta p over delta t estimates the average of two points. What if the black hole was replaced with a new black hole in the same location, yet the motion of the star remains unchanged and is only affected by the gravitational force of the new black hole? Could you tell the difference? Since the motion of the star remains unchanged, this means that the position data is the same. The position data is essentially what I used to calculate the mass of the black hole. So, the mass of the new black hole would be the same as the one that we just predicted which is 1.99 e31 kilograms. In conclusion, the mass of the black hole can be calculated with vPython through the use of certain physics principles and the star data provided. Thank you for watching. This concludes Lab 3.